Before we begin on section 4.3, I did uh, want to remind you all that your platonic solids are due on Monday or Friday. I don't know yet. It depends. It depends how far we get. So here's my little post-it note. Platonic solids are either Friday or Monday, depending on how far we get. So Wednesday we'll know for sure. But it does take a couple hours to make all of them. You need five uh, for full credit. And it is the making of them that is helping you learn about the photonic solids. So do take time to see how each face is the same shape. The directions for those are on D2L content if you don't remember us talking about them before. Does anybody have any questions about those or about your homework? I got emailed a few questions, but I think I'll set up a separate little video of those instead of taking the class time for them. So we'll go ahead and take a look at 4.3. So um, on your notebook paper, can you draw a rectangle that you find amazingly attractive? Okay, so here's, here's a question for the start of this section. 4.3, imagine the ideal shape that comes to mind when you hear the word rectangle. Don't draw it on this page. Draw it on your page, okay? Draw the shape on your page. What you think is the nicest rectangle. So rectangles can come in different shapes, right? They just have to have four 90 degree corners and sides opposite each other have to be the same length. So a square, is a square a rectangle? Yes, a square is a rectangle where all the sides are the same, but as long as those sides opposite each other are the same length, you could make a tall skinny rectangle or a short squat, squat rectangle or a square. Okay, so I'm going to put some pictures of rectangles up on the screen and I'd like you to see which one yours looks most like. So here's some from our textbook. I put a square on there and labeled it E because there wasn't a square. Uh, and now if you made some like A, so this one's kind of long and skinny. If you made one that's tall and skinny, it would be more like A. So we're looking more at the um, how wide it is to how tall it is, not necessarily if it's laying on its side or if it's vertical, okay? So we're looking at the proportion of it. Is it wide and skinny or it could be turned and tall, tall and skinny or is it more like a square or something in between? So um, now that you compared and hopefully you look similar to either A, B, C, or D, or E, I'm going to ask you to vote. So I'm going to write down who, uh, how many people liked which one. So I'll get a little piece of paper here. So let's start with the square just because it comes first in the picture. So how many of you voted for the square? Who drew one like a square? So two, two people, square. And this is all subjective, right? It's not like there's a right answer. It's just what appeals to you. And then A, this one that's kind of wide and not very tall, but it could be on end. Uh, who voted for A? Got one, two, two votes for A. B. How many votes for B? One, two, three, four, five votes for B. How many votes for C? One, two votes for C. And how many votes for E? One, two, three, four, five, six votes for E. Six votes for E. So in this class, E had a the highest preference. In my first class it was B. What we're going to look at is the proportions of these and this, this is something I'd expect you to be able to do on a quiz is to take a ruler out and find the proportion of the wide side to the small side. So do you take out your ruler if you have it and we'll go ahead and measure. Um, if you don't have a ruler 
Well, how are you going to measure? It's on the screen. Okay. <laughs> All right. I will measure and tell you, and you can watch it this time, but you'll be doing this later on in class. So once you see how to do it, you might want to download an app for your phone that can measure, because there are some apps that are free that you can measure, like a ruler, and you'll be using it later. So the, the square is easy, because it's, it's one inch to one inch. And that ratio comes out to one. Uh, it's easier to measure in centimeters because then you don't have to say one in five thirty seconds. You know, you can just use the decimals. So this in centimeters is two point eight to point seven. I think that's four, right? Because seven divides into twenty eight four times. So that's four. And so what we're saying with that is that the width is four times as wide as the height. The long side is four times as wide as uh, the short side. Uh, B B is 18 to, oh no, that must have been, yeah, 28. 17. So that would be 28 divided by 17. 1.64, so about 1.6. C has a short side of 1.2 and a long side of 2.5. Two point zero eight, so two about. So the um, C is twice as tall as it is wide. One uh, three point two to one point four. So three point two to one point four. Two point. So that would be 2.3 about. <coughs> so in this class, the uh, C, uh, D was the most popular. It turns out the one B is called the golden rectangle. Has anybody heard about the golden rectangle before? Who's heard of the golden rectangle? Anybody? Nobody? So in art, there's a lot of artists who feel this ratio of long side to short side coming out to 1.6 is the most beautiful of all the rectangles. And again, it's subjective and you can debate if you find it the most beautiful. But we'll see a lot of art today that has this golden ratio in it. So we see in the Parthenon, we have the rectangles drawn around it and the Parthenon, you can find a golden rectangle there. Uh, ratio of long side to short side is 1.6. We have this, what is it called? A Greek scap, scout, sculpture? No, a Greek sculpture? I thought it was something fancier than a Greek sculpture. Well, <laughs> this has golden rectangles in it, and you can see it as it's diagrammed over here. <coughs> Here's Leon, some of Leonardo da Vinci's work. Leonardo da Vinci loved math, and so he puts lots of golden rectangles in. I prefer you to talk after class unless it's about this, okay? What? Oh, okay. What you, do you want to share? I was just talking about what uh, era of sculpture the columns of the... Do you know? Were, yeah, I think they were Doric. Doric, yeah? That's what they're Doric columns? Thank you for telling us. Yeah. And then um, here is some of Seurat's work, and you can see it has some golden rectangles superimposed on it, and the author describes where those golden rectangles are. Then we have architecture showing up with some golden rectangles. On the next page, those have the actual drawing imposed on them. One of the things that people find beautiful about the golden rectangles is that if you take a square out, what remains is a golden rectangle. So here you see this whole 
architectural shape with the square drawn on it. And if you take that square out, what's left right here is still a golden rectangle. And so that, that golden rectangle outlines a, <coughs> a porch and your author put it on its side to show you that it's the same proportions. I have brought you some figures and I'd like you to work to find golden rectangles in them. So I have a number of selections here. I didn't put them online for online students because all you have to do is Google art and the golden rectangle and you'll find lots of pictures. So online students, you can go ahead and do that. And here I'm just going to send some out. There's enough for everybody to take one. Uh, I'll collect them at the end of class though, so please don't draw on them, okay? And then um, find some golden... Find some golden rectangles on your picture and then trade pictures with someone nearby so you can try a different picture and find some golden rectangles. So go ahead and find some golden rectangles and once you've had a chance to find some then you can share with the class and we'll just note, it, note them together. they can give you the measurements and you can put it in your calculator and see if it comes out to be a golden ratio or not. taking the ruler and we're looking at a rectangle that we think might be golden like I think maybe this blue one is and then we measure it and write the measurements down and then divide the top the large length by the short length okay so, so how about trying that before we start? Um, that's a good question. So, 
you would try to use your black woman. So what, what's easier to do that with the black one maybe? So let's go through these together and you can tell me where you found the golden rectangle. So on this first picture, this, these ones that are a bunch of rectangles put together are done by Mondrian. Should I ask the art major how to say Mondrian or is that, <laughs> have you heard, how do you say it? I say Mondrian. Mondrian, okay, Mondrian, all right. Uh, so. Did anybody find, was there a golden rectangle in there at all? Did anybody work on that one? Or nobody found one if there was one? Okay. Well, let's forget that one. Let's go to some that someone found. Here we have some works by Leonardo da Vinci. This one is what? Who knows that one? Yeah, the Mona Lisa. Okay. Did anybody find a golden rectangle there at all? Where, was there one? So because of the lack of sophistication in our tools that we're using, if you find anything between 1.57 and 1.64, we'll say that the artist was trying to work toward a golden rectangle because our tools for measuring are not that precise. So nobody found a golden rectangle there at all? Okay, maybe nobody looked at them. Did anybody find a golden rectangle on this one? No? Okay, how about on the Parthenon? Anybody find any golden rectangles there? Who looked at the Parthenon? Yes, did you find any? Um, I was I'm sorry, what? I was the whole thing? Yeah. Okay, so we measure the whole thing. We take the long measurement, divide by the short measurement. So the long measurement is uh, 13, and we're using the square that's superimposed, and the short measurement is 8, and then we say 13 divided by 8, and we get 1.625, okay. So you take the long measurement and divide it by the short measurement. Now, this one, the rectangle is superimposed, and it's supposed to be where the building would have been before it crumbled because time has passed. So the idea is that the P 
peak of it would have gone up to here and um, go down to there. And the edges go all the way up to here. All right, so there's the Parthenon. How about some other pictures? I gave them all out, so I need a couple more. Can you, did you find any there? I think so. Yeah, I think seven. Mm -hmm. seven? I only did two of them here. So the green and yellow together? Or which one are you talking about? Oh, this one. The little one? Yeah, I guess you could do both together too. Okay, so if you're remembering right, <coughs> they said the yellow one right here. So that's one, just the yellow without the black. So you could try the yellow without the black or the yellow with the black. You don't remember which way you did it. <laughs> So long side, one, actually 11, 1.1. And then short side, point 0.7. Okay, so 1.1 1 .1 to point 0.7. One point five seven. So again, with the lack of sophistication in my measuring tools, we'll say that's that was meant to be a golden rectangle. All right, we have that one. What are the shapes? Where's another shape? You have another shape, right? Did you find any golden rectangles there? Did anybody find a golden rectangle on this picture? What was? The green rectangles. The green rectangles. So I see a green rectangle right here. Along side. One point six. Short side. Invisible. <laughs> no, short side point nine. So one point six to point nine. So 1.77. I, I think I don't. I think I didn't measure that quite right because on the earlier class it came out much closer to 1.6, and you got it measured to 1.6. What other pictures are there? Anybody have any other pictures? Okay. Well, uh, these other ones did have some golden rectangles in them. If you want to investigate further on your own, but I think what we're going to do now. What I mean is these pictures. That I think what we're going to do now is take a look at how to make the golden rectangle ourselves. Before we do that, does anybody remember seeing the number 1.6 before in this class? Because we have seen that number before. Where did 1.6 show up before? Pardon? I think you said it. Yeah. Yeah, the golden ratio is phi. Yeah, so uh, does anyone remember how we generated phi? Where did it come from? Yeah, yeah, very good. No, oops, the other way around, sorry. Okay, so that was one way to get it. And uh, what were we discussing when we got it that way? Because there were a number of ways to approach feed. Does anyone remember where we actually came up with this from? Anyone remember? It was from the Fibonacci sequence. So remember our Fibonacci sequence started out one, one, and then we added and get the next number, add and get the next number, and that's the way it goes. Well, the Fibonacci sequence has ratios then. If you take the long, the second number divided by the first number, that's like taking rectangles and taking the long side and dividing by the short side. So you take the one divided by one, which is just one, then the two divided by one, which is just two, three divided by two, which is 1.5, five divided by three, which is 1.67, 8 divided by 5, 13 divided by 8, 
21 divided by 13. And the longer this went on, the closer we got to the exact <coughs> value of phi. So 21 divided by 13 was very close. 21 divided by 13. Point six two. So the golden rectangle uses the golden ratio. One of the things that people find beautiful about the golden rectangle is that if you take a square out, you're left with another golden rectangle. If you have a picture of the Parthenon near you, you can take a look and see here's this superimposed golden rectangle if we take out this square and put the ruler through, what we have left is a golden rectangle. And if we take this leftover golden rectangle and take the square out of the middle right there, what we have left is a golden rectangle. If we take that golden rectangle and take the square out, what we have left is a golden rectangle. So some people feel that what appeals to some persons about the golden rectangle is that beautiful symmetry that's going on. If you take out a square, you're left with a golden rectangle. Well, that's going to help us sketch the golden rectangle. So you'll need, for this sketching, you'll need um, a ruler. So if you have a ruler, you should get that. You'll need graph paper. If you have graph paper, you can get that. If you don't have graph paper, take a, unlined, um, take a extra sheet of paper out of your notebook to use as your ruler. And you'll need a compass. So I brought some extra compasses. If you don't have a compass and you want one, that's great. Try and get one between every two people so you can borrow one, all right? So yeah, come up and get one if you want, but try and get one from every two people to borrow one. <laughs> oh, and there's only an empty case left. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. You gonna share with them? Yeah. Okay. All right. You gonna share? Okay. Okay. So <laughs> just a oh, it's just a yeah. Yeah. It's all. <laughs> okay. So hopefully you're near someone with a compass, or you remember to bring your own. Um. Let's go ahead and draw it. So let's write down what we're gonna do. So the things you'll be needing to know from this class, this section on 4.2 is: Can you measure a picture and find a golden rectangle in it? Okay. And then, this is another thing you'll need to be able to do in this class, and that is to sketch a golden rectangle using a, com a compass. Sketch a golden rectangle using a compass. So to start your golden rectangle off, you'll need a square. And I'm going to make a big square so everyone can see. I'll make it eight, eight by eight. So if you're using lined paper, then use your one ruler, uh, use one set of lines as a ruler on another piece, okay? So you can measure eight lines across and eight, down, eight vertical. Improvise. So start with a square. I'm making mine 8 by 8. Doesn't have to be a square 8 by 8, but that will work nicely. So you'll need a compass by the time you take your quiz, right? You can borrow one of my compasses, I guess, during a quiz, but if you're an online student and you're not with me, then you'll definitely need a compass. Okay, so start with a square. Everybody have their square? I'm going to come around and see how you're doing. So 
Uh, make sure you're working along with us. Okay, once you have your square, mark M for middle on the bottom. Now, it doesn't have to be on the bottom. If you wanted the orientation of your rectangle to come out differently, you'd pick a different side. But we're going to pick the bottom just so that we're all matching here. And when you're in art class, you can use it however you want. Or if you have to make a structure, or if you're making a beautiful poster, whatever you want to do, you can turn the orientation differently. Then mark C in the upper right corner. Mark C in the upper right corner. And now, that was where you need your compass, okay? So you take your compass, <coughs> and you put the point on M and the pencil on C. Now, in ancient times, your compass would have collapsed. There's been compasses around since the um, Greeks, at least, and they would have collapsed in the past. Yours is probably stiff so that it doesn't collapse. So put the point on M and the pencil on C and make a arc. So you want the arc to come down quite far. So the point on M and the pencil on C and make that arc, okay? And so lend it to your person next to you if you need to at this time. Yeah, how do you make it go? I have a pencil sharpener. And the pencil is like not staying. Oh, you got the, um, I just gotta figure out which end. <coughs> Do you have any paper to put it on? I have glue. Yeah. Well, glue? Super glue. Well, you could glue a piece of paper on it and make the pencil fatter, and then it would stick better. Or you could just borrow someone's. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I don't even think you'd have to glue it. I think if we just wrap a little piece of scrap paper around it, it'll make it fatter. Just stick it Okay, so borrow from your neighbor to try that out. We put the, the pointy end at M and the pencil at C and draw the arc. So that is step three. Let's see how that's going. Okay. Here, you could borrow her. You could borrow this one. Okay. I'm doing it. Did that work at all? <laughs> it's so tight. Yeah. Like construction and math. Okay. Okay, so you have your arc. I think it'll work now. Here's the hope. Okay, so once you've done that, then extend your base. Extend your base over to there because that's how that's how wide the uh, golden rectangle needs to be. So we take the square, we make a compass arc from M to C and bring that arc down, and that tells how wide the golden rectangle needs to be. So extend your base, and that's how wide it needs to be. Okay, so you mark C in the corner, then you make a compass arc, and 
MC rotated. Okay, so you make that compass mark that's from M to C and rotate it down. <coughs> if you don't have a compass and you're still waiting, if you want, you can take a piece of paper and use it as a ruler to measure. Okay, so you could measure, you can mark MC off here. And then transfer that here. Okay, so that's another way to make your own ruler, right? Homemade ruler. Okay. So you get that length down on, on a quiz though, I need to see the arc so I know you know how to how to make it with a compass. And then draw the height in. Finish drawing your rectangle. So you've actually made two golden rectangles when you've done that. You've made the big golden rectangle that's the main rectangle. And you've also made a rectangle that goes from here to here that's a golden rectangle as well. So this, if you take this square out, then the rectangle between these two corners is a golden rectangle. Anybody have any questions on that? Well, we're going to find another way now to make a golden rectangle that does not require a compass. So you'll need another piece of graph paper or the back of that one. So I'll ask you to make um, golden rectangles both ways. This one was with a compass. And it, on the quiz, it will say make sure your arc, <coughs> your compass arc is showing. Uh, the second way is to make a golden rectangle using the Fibonacci sequence. So you'll, you'll first have to, to make a golden rectangle using the Fibonacci sequence, you'll first have to write down a few numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. So if you get up to 13, that should be plenty far. I'll just put 21, just in case there's room. So the Fibonacci sequence starts 1, 1, and then we just keep adding 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. And now we'll see how this grows into a beautiful golden rectangle, just like occurs in nature. So on the very first page of your section 4.3, your author has the Nautilus shell, which makes a golden rectangle as it grows. So we're going to do just like this Nautilus shell, and we're going to spiral outward as the rectangle grows according to the Fibonacci sequence. And I think as you do that, you'll see why the Fibonacci sequence occurs in nature. I think you'll see how that growing fits naturally with the Fibonacci sequence. So toward the middle of your page, we start with a square one by one, because that's the first number in the Fibonacci sequence, one. And we're going to spiral counterclockwise. So now we do another one, and we're spiraling counterclockwise, so I'm going to put it to the right one. So I have another square one by one. The next number in the Fibonacci sequence is two, so now I'm going to put a square two by two on top. So now there's room to write two by two instead of just plain two, okay? So we had one, one, now well, we had one by one, one by one, now two by two. And now as we continue counterclockwise, you see how this, this was three tall? So we make a square three wide. And now we're getting to a point where you should use a straight edge because we're getting kind of long lines and we want this to look nice, okay. So uh, we had one by one, one by one, two by two, three by three. You see how that made a length of five? So we continue on 
uh, in the counterclockwise direction with five by five now. Uh, that brings us to eight, but look, we are eight tall. So we can make a square that's eight by eight, going off the side here, and we continue to rotate counterclockwise. And then we're going to do 13. That's our next number. And where will the 13 go? Is anybody getting the pattern? Where's the square 13 by 13 going to go? On the top. On the top, yeah. Because we're going counterclockwise. So we're going like that. You can make that noise too. Can you do that? No, just kidding. Okay. All right. 13 by 13 now. by 13 and if we had room we would make a square 21 by 21 and where would that square go yeah. off to the left that's right so we're just making this beautiful spiral um, as <coughs> a nautilus shell would <coughs> unfold as it grows the nautilus shell actually makes what's called a logarithmic spiral there was a logarithmic spiral sketched on one of these artworks so the logarithmic spiral, you can see the equations, the mathematical equations that are behind them. If you're interested, you can look those up. We're not going to look at logarithms. That's more math than we want to get into, more um, arithmetic type math. And we're sticking with the geometry type math today. So let's go ahead and draw the logarithmic spiral. So you need to make a golden rectangle using the Fibonacci sequence along with a golden spiral. So the golden spiral is like the nautilus shell and we start in the um, opposite corners of the one one so so we start in the opposite corners the diagonal corners from one another and don't connect those corners with straight lines because that's not how a logarithmic spiral or a nautilus shell grows it has a curve in it so you go through the diagonal corners with a little bit of swoopiness going on okay a little a little curve with it. So watch what corner you're headed toward and go through those corners and I do check to see if you hit the corners. If you just kind of draw a loopy loop in there you're not going to have it as nicely as you need to to get credit. So go through the corners in a nice curve. And can you see how a sunflower plant might unfurl as it's growing and get those Fibonacci numbers of spirals in there or a um, pine cone. Okay. So build squares counterclockwise. You can go clockwise too, but I'm just saying stick with a wave so that you know what you're doing. So I'm just picking counterclockwise. Build the squares counterclockwise. And then the spiral through diagonal corners. The life lesson in this section was to take ideas from one domain and explore them in another. So we started with the Fibonacci numbers in nature and we get this ratio out of them. The ratio shows up in art and evidently is uh, 
beautiful to many people since it shows up in a lot of art and architecture. And then uh, we're able to look at it more carefully and see that a golden rectangle has a golden rectangle within it. Now, once you've made your golden rectangles, I'm going to be asking you to check their measurements. So take, take uh, both of them out and we'll check the measurements. The one that you drew with the logarithmic spiral is easy to check. You don't even need a ruler because you can count off the squares. So this one is 21 squares tall and 13 squares wide. So it doesn't matter if you use inches, centimeters, or squares, your measurement should come out to have the same ratio after you put the numbers in your calculator. So I'm using the squares on this one. And you get the 1.6. And then on the other one, and, and I will ask you to check on your quiz as well. Okay, so the other one I'm going to take out a ruler. And mine's 8.2 wide and 5.1 tall <coughs> in centimeters. So that's uh, 1.6 as well. Now, as you're working on these, if you're like at between 1.57 and 1.64, don't, don't worry. That's pretty good with the tools that we're using. If any of these didn't work out for you, I'd love to see you after class and help you with that. Online students, you feel free to email me a picture and we'll talk about why it didn't work out. Anybody have any questions? Okay, I will see you on Wednesday.